What is up, gang? Welcome to my Fixation Live. If you're new to my channel, my name is Shanika. I'm the lab girl. And today we will be discussing fixation. Um, I told you guys last week that I would start um, a fixation chapter for you guys. And last night when I while I was reviewing my fixation chapter, I actually was a little bit excited about this live because I was able to reread some things and go over some things and make some notes for you guys. So I hope this fixation live will be beneficial for you guys. Um, welcome to the live. Happy Halloween. That's the first thing I would like to say to you guys. And if you guys are in the live right now, I did put your very first um, ASCP question up. And I know I probably have a list as ASCP question number two, but it doesn't matter. You can go ahead and drop the answer in the live as we talk. And that question is a good fixative will protect tissue against alteration by subsequent processing, prevent formation of formic acid or render cell constituents soluble. So that's your first question. You can go ahead and drop the answer down in the comment section down below and if you are new to my channel thank you so much for joining the gang and for my long time viewers thank you so much for returning let's go ahead and get into the live today we're going to be talking about fixation and what is a good fixative um to use so last week um i explained to you guys really quick that the front of your Frida Carson book would be your objectives and what you should study for fixation, how you should read over all the questions in the chapter um, as you're studying for your for your ASCP, because those questions definitely come in handy. All right, so let's go ahead and get this live started. What is fixation? That's just a general statement. Um, you guys definitely need to study exactly what fixation is, um, the different factors that affect fixation, how fixation works on different types of tissues, what type of fixation to use whenever you are choosing a fixative for the tissue specimen. We all know that, you know, if you're a histotech or you're about to become a histotech, um, normally the tissue receives comes in the lab received already in the fixative so sometimes that takes away you know you know exactly what fixative to choose but for your ASCP Frida Carson still would like for you to know all the different fixatives the function of the fixatives and what is inside of each fixative so that's very very important so the first thing is let's just go ahead and talk about what is fixation fixatives alter tissue by stabilizing the protein so that so that it's resistant to further changes fixatives change the soluble contents of a cell to insoluble to those substances aren't lost at process so that substances aren't lost at process so that's that's the reason for the tissue being fixed so that way it can actually change certain things within that cell but by the time it makes it to the lab for you guys, none of the things are lost and the cell structure is still preserved. So that's very, very important. Okay, so that's just the generalization of what a fixative does now in your Frida Carson book you guys already know that you do need to know the functions of a fixative and the actions of a fixative so make sure to study the actions and the functions of fixation and what each fixative does what I'm going to be helping you guys with is throughout this chapter I'm just going to maybe give you some of my tips um, that I use to pass the ASCP as far as questions wise, as far as like what I've have written in my book, some things to help jog my memory whenever it came to remembering some things with fixation, which is very important because it's so much to retain 
So if you're going to be making your own flashcards, I really suggest that you try to write down not everything because you won't be able to remember everything, but try to categorize certain things to where you don't try to categorize certain things to where it doesn't, you know, run together because by the time you get to special stains, you're going to have to list your special stains and what fixative you may have used for that special stain. So those two will end up going together. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into um, the study actions and functions of a fixative. Okay, so we all know that the functions of a fixative is to make sure that we prevent autolysis and make sure that, you know, by the time the tissue is gross, that tissue specimen needs to make it to the, histo the histology lab so autolysis doesn't happen. It needs to be starting to process, which is informalin or the choice of fixative that the grocer has put the tissue specimen in. Um, Welcome you guys to the chat. Whoever's watching, definitely go ahead and answer the question down below. I've listed your first ASAP question in the chat and I see some of you guys have responded and I'll definitely let you guys know the answer at the end of the, of the live. All right. So the different fixes that we're going to be talking about today um, will be the first three main fixatives um, that, you know, we'll get into this chapter. But before we get into the fixatives, we need to make sure that we understand that whenever you're doing your categories, um, your, whenever you're categorizing your fixatives, try not to think, try not to put things together to where it makes it more confusing. So the first thing is um, you want to make sure that you break down fixation as your fixatives, are they additives, non-additives, coagulant, or non-coagulant? Because whenever you're taking the ASCP uh, on the test, it will it will ask you, is this a non-coagulative or is it coagulative? Is it a non-additive or is it an additive? And the first fixative that we're going to speak about will be formula, formaldehyde. And in my book here, I see where I broke everything down as far as a flashcard. So with your flashcard, you want to make sure that you list a diagram or of your fixatives, additive, non-additives. And a little hint that I did was for all the non-additive fixatives, it would be alcohols, acetone, and acidic acid. So the way that I remember that was non-additive, and I remember all the A's. So the non-additives would be alcohols, acetone, and acetic acid, non-additive fixatives. But you need to know if those fixes are non-coagulants or coagulants. And if you look at the definition for non-coagulant and coagulant, they're two different things. So let's go ahead and look at this. The coagulant fixatives are zinc salts, mercuric chloride, alcohol, methyl alcohol, acetone, picric acid, and acetic acid. The non-coagulants would be formaldehyde, glutaraldehyde, gloxol, oxymosium testosteride, potassium dichromate. So break down what is coagulant, non-coagulant, additive, non-additive, because that's going to be really important because you want to know exactly what that fixative is doing to the tissue. Okay, so if we look at the definition for an additive fixative, additive fixatives chemically link or add themselves onto the tissue and change it with this action. When a fixative molecule adds onto a tissue, the electrical charge at that site attachment may be changed. 
The common additive reagents are mercury chloride, chromium trioxide. <laughs> I'm probably even I'm probably saying that wrong. Chromium trioxide, picric acid, formaldehyde, glutaraldehyde, osmosium testosterone, zinc salts, and chloride. Non additive fixatives, predominantly organic compounds such as acetone and alcohols, act on tissue without chemically combining it. So all the A's, which are non-additives, they act on the tissues without changing anything, without chemically combining it. So that's why they're called a non-additive. So do your little diagram. There's a diagram in your Frida Carson book. And if you have your Frida Carson book, and if you have, um, if you're in the fixation chapter, there is a breakdown of what is a coagulant and what's a non-coagulant? Coagulants are normally like create this thick gel um, substance, which would be the chloride, the chromic, the picric, the zinc salts, and the alcohols. Non-coagulants would be the formaldehyde, the glute, the glycol, the osmosium testosterone, and the potassium dichromate. So you definitely want to make sure once again that you separate the two. Something may be non-coagulant but be an additive a fixing may be a non-additive but may be a coagulant and sometimes things can be both so definitely study that as far as your additives non-additives non-coagulants and coagulants all right let's see here welcome to the live um you guys if you are watching this live on replay, make sure you put replay fam down in the bottom below. But if you're live with me, thank you so much for joining me. This is your fixation part one. Uh, we're only going to be speaking about three fixatives today. Um, just the basics of the fixatives. Um, the ones you'll probably see more of in the lab and exactly what to study for for the ASCP. And there is a question already in the comment section you guys can definitely answer that if you are joining right now and at the end of the live i'll go ahead and tell you guys what the correct answer was um, for that ascp question tip okay so all your factors affecting fixation you definitely want to study those your temperature the size the volume ratio and the time these are very important because all of these different factors will determine how your tissue looks at the end of processing and how your tissue will look at the end whenever it is done being stained and that pathologist actually sees that tissue for the first time underneath the microscope with the H &E. So these are things sometimes that you probably want to see as a histotech because this, these things happen at the beginning after the biopsy. These things happen at grossing. So you can only really visually, um, you can only really visualize these things. Um, that's why I always stress to you guys, if you guys are in school or if you guys work in the lab, if you are a lab tech or you got a job at a lab, um, and you are not a histotech yet, that's really good because you can literally visualize these things as they're happening while I'm talking to you. But for someone who maybe is still in school and someone who has to take the ASCP and haven't had their first job yet, whenever you do your clinicals, these are things that will click and make sense. That's the reason why I always tell you guys do not rush to take the ASCP because I don't mean time frame as far as rushing um, to schedule it. I just mean as far as time frame is to so you can be able to visualize after your clinicals. Okay, this is what fixation means. And this is how the fixatives is done because you don't get to see this part um, whenever before it comes to the lab. So these three things or these, uh, these three things definitely plays a major part in fixation. This will be on your test. Um, temperature, size, volume, ratio, and time. And if you look at your pictures here, because these are like, these are troubleshooting questions, and you'll see like where there may be an intestine missing, um, you know, the mucosa, maybe the goblet cells, 
um, there can be things missing on spec on the specimen and you won't know it until the tissue is actually stained. So this actually happens at fixation. So if you get a troubleshooting question and if it's a picture and you see like epithelial missing or you see something that's probably not present, this is when it's really important for you to pay attention to the picture because you will only know that it's a fixation issue and not a processing issue. I stress to you guys that sometimes these pictures can be a little confusing. And sometimes these pictures can, um, they may ask you a question and they'll put an answer what may be what's wrong with the, the tissue or what's wrong with this picture. And you will see and you may think, oh, it's, you know, it's from the water bath. So you want to make sure that you study these pictures very carefully when it comes to fixation and you study these pictures very carefully when it comes to processing um, and microtomy because those tissues picture, those tissue pictures, um, very important for you to know what each picture looks like not necessarily the type of tissue it is, but you want to make sure that you understand where where it went wrong. And with fixation, you'll see things missing. You'll see where, you know, if you know what an intestine looked like underneath the microscope, you'll see maybe some things may be missing. Or for skin, you'll see some things that may, that may be missing microscopically. So definitely study your fixation uh, pictures because those pictures will be on the ASCP. Okay, so in my fixation chapter, I also see where I've highlighted the choice of fixative. Now you have factors affecting your fixation, but you also have the choice of fixative that the grocer chooses to use for fixation. So if you look at certain things, they may come in the lab in different fixatives and some may not even need a fixative, just say like a frozen section doesn't need a fixative. Um, but most of the tissue, 90% of the time will come in formalin and that's what you guys will see that you know that it comes in formalin so definitely know um the choice of fixatives and that's what we're about that's what we're about to get into right now okay if you look at your fixation chapter there are nine fixatives listed under aqueous fixatives. And it says number 10 is others. So these are your aqueous. And I'm thinking I didn't really get through the whole chapter yet because I'm only going to speak. I'm only speaking about three fixatives today. Uh, but some fixatives are aqueous, non aqueous. Um, but these right here are your simple aqueous fixatives which means they're with water and the following are water-based or aqueous fixatives ingredients that are discussed in this text so the main thing i want to discuss first is what we all see whenever we are at work and that is formaldehyde so with formaldehyde we already know from the beginning that it is non-coagulant. So if you're going to be making cue cards or you're going to be making your study cards, um, make sure that you put formaldehyde is it is non-coagulant is and that's because it's a gel base. So non-coagulant uh, non is for your formaldehyde. It's a colorless gas and they will ask you um, the 37 to 40% solution in water. And as far as formaldehyde, we are formalin, we are used to getting all of our tissue in formalin. That's what we know that's universal. We always get, get it in formalin. And as far as your formaldehyde, um, it's non-coagulant and it's an additive. Now for a cheat sheet, if you look in your book, um, there is a page 
where it actually has like the breakdown, which is characteristics of the various fixative ingredients. So even when you're making your own flashcards, because there's so much to try to remember in fixation, um, just try to write down the most important things. And that's what I'm trying to go over with you guys. Like just because you can't consume everything, you won't be able to remember everything. But unless you just got a memory like a, is it like an elephant? Or maybe that's a bad memory. Um, but if you if you just break these down, then you should be able to keep yourself straight whenever it comes to the to the fixation. So formaldehyde. Make sure you put it's non coagulant and it's an additive. And with formaldehyde, the main key things to know is that it penetrates quick, but it fixes slow. That's the great thing about fixing the tissue in formalin because it penetrates the tissue to render those cells to prevent autolysis. But if you do not get the tissue in the formalin at the time of grossing, then that's how putrefaction and autolysis can happen. It starts to decay because you waited too long to put it into the formalin, right? So that's one of the factors that can affect fixation. But as long as that tissue is immediately fixed at the ratio that is supposed to be ratio, I think it's like 10 to 20 times. Um, that's very, very important. And once that's transferred or transported over to the lab, that's penetrating it quick, but it's fixing it slow enough because then it has to go into the different uh, processing uh, reagents, which is really good for the tissue because it allows the tissue to um, penetrate slowly, but fix enough or penetrate quick, but fix enough to where we don't lose any any type of uh, ultra structure, you know, things that we need to look for. Okay, so we know it's non-coagulant. We know it's an additive. That's two things. We know it penetrates quick. That's the third thing. It causes less shrinkage. <laughs> Sorry, guys. My sh it causes less shrinkage, but allows more special stain techniques than any other fixative. Once again, anything that's received in fixative or anything that's received in formalin, we know that we can perform special stains right on it um the so this is the pros so if you want to like separate formaldehyde those are the three benefits and another benefit is that lipids are preserved so if you want to do like a a con of using formaldehyde we can do it that way or however you guys think that you want to um, separate it the formaldehyde it has a formalin pigment uh, a formalin pigment that you know is that it needs to be buffered so you know the three pigments which is mercuric pigment mercury pigment zinc and formalin pigment so formalin can create that formalin pigment on the tissue which is like these black spots and if you have your Frida Carson book let me see if I can find with the formalin pigment a tissue okay so if you have a free if you have the Frida Carson book um, you should see a picture um, it says formalin pigment is seen in a blood rich area of the section of a kidney it's a brown microcrystalline pigment that tends to form in tissues when the pH of the formalin solution drops below six it is caused by a reaction between the heme part of the, of the hemoglobin and the formic acid present in acidic formalin solutions. The pigment is also called black acid hematin. In some sections, formalin pigment may be confused with um, aranthoc aranthocotic pigment, malarial pigment, and really melanin. But if you see like these black specks, then you want to make sure on your ASCP they will show that picture. And that is formalin pigment. So that's one of your pigments. And that can happen with formaldehyde. Another thing about formaldehyde is not a good fixation for carbohydrates. And you need to know how to prepare formaldehyde to make it formalin. So 
when it comes to studying the formaldehyde, I try to keep all the aldehydes together. So I try to do glutaraldehyde, glucosal, and formaldehyde. Those are the three aldehydes that is in the fixation chapter. Welcome to the chat, um, gang. I did put a question in the comments uh, section below. You guys definitely go ahead and answer those and I'll let you guys know the correct answer at the end of the live. Thank you so much for joining me. Right now we're just talking about fixation. If you just joined and we're talking about the first fixative, which is formaldehyde, formalin, that's the one you guys should be, you know, most aware about. That's the most common one that we use in the lab. Okay, so the next aldehyde, I like to keep those together, like I said. So the next aldehyde would be glutaraldehyde. So, and under your coagulant, non-coagulant list, you got formaldehyde, and now you want to put glutaraldehyde underneath there because it's a non-coagulant. Um, also, I work in neuropaths, so muscle tissue goes into um, glutaraldehyde we submit a thin um, a thin specimen for muscle tissue for in glutaraldehyde is stored overnight but it needs to be transferred as quickly as possible and for em that's what we submitted for em nerve tissue i put in isotonic glute it's a a combination that's um, made up and we actually make that fresh for a nerve uh, for nerve tissue but for the muscle, a section of muscle tissue is stored in glutaraldehyde. And then the third aldehyde would be glucosal. So let me just go to the glucosal part. All right, so you know glucosal is the smallest of the dialdehydes and it is non coagulant. And Let's see here. Most special stains are satisfactory after glucosal fixation. The staining of H. pylori is unsatisfactory. Erythrocytes are lysed and granules of eosinophils are dissolved. So for, glo for glucosal, it is non coagulant like all the other glutes. It is the smallest of the dialdehydes. So think of all the three aldehydes and what they do. They're non-coagulant. And you should remember that the glucosal is not good for H. pylori, which is a stomach ulcer. Um, it's a it's a immunohistochemistry stain that we do in the lab. It's called H. pylori. And I'm trying to remember, I think we used to do a lot of H. pylori's in clinicals. So you may be familiar with H. pylori. Um, or if you have an ulcer, that's the same thing. And RBCs, which is erythrocytes, are lice. So you cannot use it if you are trying to stain for something that is trying to preserve the red blood cells. So those are the three aldehydes that you definitely want to focus on when it comes to fixation. Okay, now let's go ahead and go to acidic acid. Acidic acid is non-coagulant because remember it's in that, well, I was going to say it was in that A category, but it is. So it's non-additive. So for your non-additives, remember it's all your A's. Alcohol, acetone, and acidic acid. Knowing with acetone, things that are fixed, um, we've we fixed frozen sections with with acetone as well. Um, but once you figure out what you can fix with alcohol, acetone, and acidic acid, just know that they're non-additives, and also they are coagulants. Or no, I'm sorry. 
text differ. Okay. So acetic acid non-coagulant. If I'm wrong, let me know. Because for some reason I got non-coagulant, but let me just read it. Mm, let's see here. Okay, so we do know with this acetic acid, it produces that swelling effect. So that's one thing to think about. Acetic acid swells and then picric acid shrinks. So whenever you start to see yourself going between picric acid and acetic acid within a, within a stain that you're going to be reading in special stains or whenever you get into your special stains, you'll know they do the counteract effect. So want to swell, want to shrink. So in order for you to remember that acidic acid, it is both. I just answered my question. It's both. It can be a coagulant and a non-coagulant. That may be on the ACP. It swells both coagulant and non-coagulant. Also with the acidic acid, it doesn't fix or destroy carbs. It doesn't fix lipids. It penetrates tissue very rapidly. So whatever tissue specimen that may be fixed in acidic acid is probably not the best because it penetrates tissue fast, which means that tissue can be hardened. If some, you put something in acidic acid, the tissue can fix so quickly to where it, it's not a good, you know, it's, the biopsy may be ruined. So be definitely be careful of that if you are going to be grossing. Um. RBCs are lysed by the acetic acid. So it is not good for red blood cells. Sometimes it's added to other fixatives to counteract shrinking of other reagents. That's exactly what I was talking about. So if you have something that has picric acid in it, most likely it's going to have acetic acid to counteract that, to counteract that swelling effect. So it may have both inside of the, inside of the, um, inside of the, not the reagent, but it may have both inside of that special stain that you may be using. Um, they're great for the preservation of nuclear proteins. It fixes nuclei. So whenever you start to get into your special stains and if you see something has acetic acid in it, then you know that it is great for fixing nucleoproteins. So from what I'm reading in the book is acetic acid does not fix or destroy carbs. It does not fix lipids. It penetrates very rapidly and leaves the tissue very soft. Okay, so I thought it would leave it hard but since it penetrates it rapidly, but it leaves it very soft. So it looks like um, it's not used quite often to preserve anything but the nucleoproteins. But another thing that is very important whenever you're using acetic acid is how to combine acetic acid. And it's always, always rule of thumb. You store the room, you store it at room temperature. And you always add the acidic acid to water, never the other way around. And as a histotech, like I've just caught myself or other histotechs saying, wait, like does acidic acid supposed to go into water? Is it water to acid or acid into water? So that's very important. Just as you being a histotech in the lab, you always put the acidic acid, always add it to water. Never add water to it because another type of reaction can probably occur. So that is... Acidic acid, formaldehyde, acidic acid, the glutaraldehyde, the glucosal, and the last thing would be the mercuric chloride.
Okay, so with mercuric chloride, mercuric chloride is, let's see what it is first before we get into what it's good for and what it's not good for. All right, mercuric chloride is a coagulant. And it's an additive. So we've been talking about the non-additive is a lot, but now this a now this is an additive, which means that it does change something chemically. So it's going to be mercuric chloride. It's a coagulant, and it is an additive, and it's also one of the pigments because you can get mercury or pigment salts. And that can't be prevented, but it can be removed with the iodine and sodium thiosulfate. That would be on the ASCP. If you have any type of mercury pigment, and if you look in your ASCP book or if you look in your Frida Carson book, it has a picture. So make sure you study that picture because it sort of, it sort of will look like your, your formalin pigment, but this is called mercury pigment. And it has been deposited but in the tissue, but not removed. So, and if you, once you start to get more into your, your fixatives, like once we start to get into like zincers, holland, gender, you'll see why you're going to have that mercury pigment. Because if you go and just, just fast forward, I won't go to, you know, far in the book, but if you go to, let's just go to zincers. Let's see what's in zincers. Okay, Zinker and Healy solutions. These are considered together because the stock solution is the same and the solution differs only in the addition of acetic acid to one and the formaldehyde to the other. Okay, so I'm giving you major key because you're going to get mercury pigment. And the reason why you're going to get it because once you get to if someone is fixing something in zincers, then you know you need to wash the tissue because in zincers and in Healy, mercuric chloride is present. And then if you look at your zincers working solution, they add acetic acid, but that's glacial acetic acid. So the difference is with zincer is going to be acetic acid, uh, glacial acetic acid, and then Healy is going to be formaldehyde so those are the two differences of that but before we get into you know that i don't want to confuse you guys but that just lets you know that if you receive something in a lab that's fixed with zincers chances are once they fix that they rinsed it because you would have mercury pigment because it has zincers has mercuric chloride in it so that's how you really have to look at your fixatives and that's how you have to break down your fixatives what is inside of your fixatives? What's inside of these different fixations? What is going to, what will cause what pigment? How it will, how will it affect the tissue? So just by doing these few um, fixatives, then you, you sort of get a range of like, okay, like what I need to look for. So with mercuric chloride, let's just go ahead and finish mercuric chloride. We know it's best for bone marrow. So that's that's one thing it's going to fix. It's best for bone marrow tissue. It's a coagulant and it's an additive. You can also get mercury pigment. Mercury chloride penetrates pore and also there can be shrinkage. I'm sorry guys, I don't know what's going on with my SHs. But <laughs> but um, that's definitely the main things when it comes to if you're going to be using mercury chloride or mercury chloride to fix anything just know that the pigment just like the formalin pigment so you got the mercury pigment we talked about and we got the formalin pigment that we talked about those are the two pigments you need to know those two pigments because they will ask you those two pigments and they will ask you how to remove the pigment okay so make sure you read that and let's see here in the next live we'll get into um oxymosium, textosteride, picric acid, p 
potassium dichromate, zinc salts. We'll get into those. And also we'll get into the other fixative ingredients. So that's the reason why if you go back, if you're in your, in your um, Frida book, it says it lists nine pigments or it lists, it lists nine um, fixatives, but it says 10 others. So we'll be getting to the others within the next few lives. I know we only went over just formaldehyde, but I do want to let you guys know that it is definitely up to you to make sure that you study um, the other types of formalin. So they got 10% aqueous formalin, 10% formalin saline, calcium formalin. This solution is recommended, especially for the fixation and preservation of phospholipids in tissue. I know that's on the ASCP because I have a circle highlighted asterisk. I got everything pointing that out that it is on the tissue or that it's on the ASCP. So calcium formalin is used to preserve phospholipids in tissue. Formalin ammonium bromide is on the ASCP as well. It's used to uh, for um, Kajal astrocytes procedure. Um, this solution is acidic and it lyses red blood cells. So probably within your probably within your your list of fixates of uh, fixatives there's several different fixatives that that you and i just went over that says it lice red blood cells probably like two to three so that's another one that's another one formula ammonium bromide it's used for a cajal astrocyte procedure it lyses red blood cells and causes nuclei to give a direct positive shift reaction due to the fugalin hydrolysis during fixation and fugalin is like your PAS we'll get into that once we start doing the stains it's um fugalin PAS uh PAS with shifts PAS with diastase we'll get into those um but definitely study those two make a flash card on 10 percent neutralized formalin um uh, let me see 10 percent neutral buffer formalin which is what we use. This solution is mostly widely used for routine formalin fixation. It has a pH of approximately 6.8 and is hypertonic in the buffer ions. So you wanna make sure that you look at the 10% neutral buffer formalin so you can know exactly what's in that 10% neutral buffer formalin. So formaldehyde, which is the 37 to 40%, is 100 ml of that. DI water, 900 ml. Sodium phosphate monobasic and sodium phosphate diabasic. That's what makes up the 10% um, MBF that you use every single day. And alcoholic formalin. That's going to definitely make a flashcard on that. I have an asterisk beside that. It's useful as a fixative on the tissue processes because in addition to fixation, the dehydration process is also begun. So... Alcoholic formalin, you want to make sure you know about that. Flash card, let me see, I have flash as far as the exposure. They're definitely going to ask you some, you know, some safety questions and the exposure of formaldehyde is on that. Formaldehyde is a carcinogen. It... It says the exposure employees to formaldehyde must be monitored within the eight hour period. The exposure limit, which is the PEL, you guys pretty sure you guys have learned it in school. PEL currently is set at the 0 0.75 ppm. That will be on your test. There's also a short term exposure limit, which is the STEL of 2 ppm over a 15 minute period. So make sure you know about the exposure limit of formaldehyde. Very, very important for your safety. I definitely know that's gonna be on the ASCP. Welcome gang to the live. We'll be wrapping up soon. We're gonna um, get into any Q and A's, any questions you guys may have for me. I did list um, an ASCP question in the comments below. And I see you guys are answering them. It says a good fixative will. So you guys choose your answer. And once we start to do these more often, um, I'm definitely going to be 
listing more ASAP questions within these lives. So that's a good thing. And that way you guys can get sort of a feeling of what is going to be on the ASAP. So definitely look out for these ASAP questions that I will be having throughout the live. And thank you for joining the gang. If you guys have not subscribed yet, definitely join the gang. Um, and let me go ahead and show you guys your next ASCP question. As I wrap this up, if you guys any got any questions down below, feel free to leave any comments or any questions. Let me know if you enjoyed the live by thumbs up in this um, live video for fixation. And I know I didn't go into too much with this book because you guys know that fixation is a very detailed chapter. So it's just really important for you guys to um, read literally the whole book, honestly. Um, I'm just looking through my book here and anything that I see throughout the live, I try to make sure that I let you guys know because if you guys are taking notes during this live, I'm just letting you guys know what I've highlighted i wrote flash i've asterisk because i knew it was important to know because of fixation and because of the ascp and i'm just looking and making sure make sure you guys study these pictures very very important study all your fixation pictures because they will be on the ascp and this is your next question and you guys can leave the um you guys can leave the comment or leave the answer as well um, in the comment or in the um, chat below. But the next question is an example of an additive fixative is one that contains. So remember your additives, non additives. And we've only did well, we've only covered like four. So your list is going to be longer. But that's why I told you guys there's a little cheat sheet in your ACP book. And what I'll do is I'll take a picture um, of the what the sheet looks like and then I'll post it on the community tab. That way you guys can see exactly what I'm speaking about. If you guys don't know exactly what cheat sheet I'm talking about, it's writing your book to where it breaks things down for you. And you may be able to just read off of that. But if you're like me, you want to make your own cards and something that's going to give you a little bit more, you know, like some hints to where you know what goes with what so remember an example of additive fixative is one that contains remember all of your a's are additive or non-additives are all of your a's see even now i got confused <laughs> so let me get my let me get my study book which is the daughter let me get that book just so I can make sure I got the right answer. And if you guys know the answer, definitely leave it down in the comment section below. Okay, an example of an additive fixative is one that contains. So your non-additive fixatives are the ones with the A's. So that's the hint. All of the A's non-additive. So all the A's mean that there are non-additives, but we're trying to see which one is an additive. Is it mercuric chloride, acidic acid, or acetone? So that should definitely be easy for you guys because that's how I um, study for that question because you're going to have to you're going to have to break down these questions because there's so many questions it's only 100 questions on the ASCP but there's so many questions um, when it comes to this this book to study and to try to retain so I'm just going to go ahead and give you the answer to that one you guys so non-additives are all the A's so that's acidic acid and acetone and then your A is mercuric chloride and that is an additive fixative all right so just really quick for lab talk um, I just want to tell you guys that 
this was just only the beginning of fixation like i just said a couple minutes ago the only the beginning of fixation um last night i really uh try to figure out a format for you guys if you guys have any uh suggestions on maybe a different format or if you're enjoying my format how i'm doing this because once again you guys may be in school or you guys may be studying for the ASCP or you can already be a histotech. So once again, that's why I always say all histotechs are made different. So the way I study may not be the way that you study and the way you retain things is definitely not the way that I retain things. But I just try to make sure that I show you guys some type of tips or some type of things that will make something click for you because while you sit in there taking the ASCP, you know how it is you get nervous and then you really have to start focusing and then once you once it kicks in that hey you know i really need to pass this test my life depends on it right now um just trying to trigger little things little keywords for you definitely helped me out so as i'm going through this book i'll let you guys know what i've highlighted what you know maybe that you can be looking at to study because you may have something totally different down because I get a lot of questions on, you know, what do I study is so much. How do I know what to study, how much to study? So that's why I try to break down the ASCP book or the Frida Carson book to where you don't literally have to sit there and just cram everything into your brain and try to remember every single thing. But as long as you can remember the basic things that I know that would be on the ASCP and the things that stick out and the things that are the most important, like the pictures, what's inside of a fixation, what's inside of a special stain reagent, what's inside of a, what's inside of special stains, what's inside of a fix a fixative, what each component may do, what does each reagent stain? Those are the basic key things. It's not really what type of tissue is this? Because, you know, the easiest tissue I remember is like lung or breast for the adipose tissue or maybe intestines or maybe skin. But as a new student or, uh, you know, someone who's studying for their test, it's just you, you don't want to make sure that you remember each control because it normally the control says kidney is a good control for this. Kidney is a good control for this. So that's not really the biggest thing that you need to remember. You need to remember what's what's that reagent? What does that reagent stain? What are the technical notes? What are the troubleshooting things that you need to know for that? Because. We, we, whenever we get in the lab, things may be automated and you're like, man, I just learned all that shit for nothing, but you need it. So I don't want you guys to think that you have to remember every single thing. But what I do want you to take away from these lives is that I'm going to position you guys to just learn or know what you need to know for the ASCP. That's the goal. And I've always said from the beginning, make sure you have Frida, the mother, make sure you have the the BLC study guide, the daughter, anyone, it doesn't matter. And now I've added, um, I've added the, um, what is it? The media lab. I think that's the name of it. Hold on. What did I use to re renew my ASCP? Hold on. Let me see. I'm drawing a blank. Hold on. Lab CE. I swear by Lab CE. So Lab CE, ASCP, Study Guide, and the um, Frida Carson. I've added Lab CE to studying. Uh, making your own flashcards. That's definitely another thing. Let me check the comments real quick. Yep. Thank you, Elizabeth. Lab CE. Thank you. Um let's see here you guys actually you know you know what's funny i'm going to check you because i told you two different questions so for the first question uh that you guys answered in the chat a good fixative will protect tissue against alteration by subsequent processing a is the answer and you guys did an amazing job on that and we've already answered the question with um the additives and non-additives so you guys chose mercury chloride 
which is additive. But I really appreciate you guys. Um, you guys did a great job. Definitely use Lab CE. And Jane, you got it. Elizabeth, thank you guys. Ji Hong. Nina Elise, thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate you guys joining the live. Um, if you guys have any, like I said, any questions, any comments, you guys know to reach me. You can make a um, a comment or a post on any one of my videos. And also, too, you guys can reach me on social media um, as well. I have an Instagram, um, lipstick bandit, underscore lipstick, underscore bandit. Um, if you guys can reach me there. But anytime you leave a comment or a question, I always respond. Definitely will get back to you guys. And before we go... As far as lab talk, I just want to let you know to make sure you have your post notifications turned on because now I'm getting more familiar with the community posts. And I know that I've been quizzing you guys, which you guys have done so great with answering these questions. Let me just go over these real quick because you guys have been participating in these and I'm super happy because you guys are doing a great job. So let me just go to the one question I put. Uh, pop quiz you guys remember this two days ago what color does the lfb stain myelin and my choices was gray blue or violet and you guys 75 percent of you guys chose blue which is correct which is lfb which is luxo fast blue now there is a luxo fast blue i think with um crystal egg violet which was stain the violet but i didn't put that i just put lfb which is luxo fast blue for the myelin and you guys were correct 75% of you guys put myelin or 75% of you guys put blue so I'm so proud of you guys and I'm going to be um posting more of these community posts and more of these pop quizzes and you know just to get you guys ready for the ASCP ready for your first job anything that we need to get you ready for and yep Elizabeth you got it it's blue you got it, girl. You guys are doing awesome. So continue to study the um, fixation chapter because I will be back next week. And that way, um, I will be back next week. That way we can continue more fixatives. Um, is there any other platform you do lives on because I want to join? You know what? This is the only platform I do lives on, but if you guys just um give me more time because the stream yard here you can actually join me um like call in and once i get the hango stream yard because it's like it looks basic but um i try to i need to juggle my time especially with work and then you know creating youtube content for you guys so I do need to read more up you know do watch more things about stream yard but you would be able to join um this live um as far as like you guys can always call in and you don't need a actual youtube like channel because i can actually see you right now so you're doing i mean as far as like you being joined right now on my stream yard that's actually perfect because you're actually live with me um but in the next like few weeks or you know next couple of months i will learn how to join you guys so you guys i'll drop a link and then that way you guys can actually join me and ask me questions live on the chat and we can just talk about your day we can talk about histology any questions you got other than typing everything in because i know they can get annoying um but if you guys just give me a few more weeks that way i can get more comfortable with Streamyard, and um that way i will know how to drop a link and then invite you guys to join the live with me and we can just chat it up and get more questions that way we can talk about career jobs any other questions i can actually open it up for more questions other than you know just straight you know me talking so definitely will be working on that i really appreciate you guys patience so i think we're done you guys got any other questions but just join me here turn on your post notifications bell if you are subscribed to me definitely subscribe to me you welcome um definitely subscribe to my channel you do not need a youtube to actually subscribe to me um well you don't need an actual youtube channel but you do need to be signed into of course google but um subscribe to my channel turn on your post notifications bell because 
that way you guys know when I drop another video, that way you guys know when I'm about to go live. Um, that's really, really important. Hold on, let me plug up my charger so my computer won't die on the live. One moment, Elizabeth, and I can answer your question. Okay, let me see. Okay, I'm still in school, but how long does it take to study for the average person? We'll be registering for my exam soon. Okay, well, as far as you studying for your exam, um, mm, but how long does it take to study for the average person? See, this is the thing. It just depends on how you study, honestly, because I know me, I'm not really, I don't know how to, you know, prioritize things sometimes and I'm like a last minute type of person so and if you're working and going to school it's kind of hard to make sure you have to still factor in working full-time you know if you have a family you know or whatever the case may be and studying so I know with me it's it, I really it would be hard for me to study doing work days you know I would have to study on my days off but um, when are you done with school? That would be the first question. Because right now, I would definitely tell you to always focus on school first. Because you're going to have enough time to study. Um, if you're currently in school now, focus on school because you got to think you still have your clinicals to do. And the goal of you being in school is to make sure that you are focusing on what you're learning in school and making sure that you are doing that workbook if you have a book that comes along you know with your classes because that's like hand in hand that's actually real time lab so take advantage of you being in the lab take advantage of you studying for the test maybe for school um okay so you finish your clinicals at the end of this week okay so once you finish your clinicals then you're done done is what i'm assuming and then you can start studying for the okay so it is what about to be november tomorrow okay so if you done with your clinicals at the end of the week it would be the perfect time to go ahead and start studying then um because you're done with your clinicals so really all it is now is just to focus on studying for the ascp what i definitely suggest and what i tell everyone i know and what i've done for myself because the first time i did not pass my 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 exam and that's because I felt rushed. And when you're in a class full of everyone who's about to take their exam and they're about to take it like the, you know, in a, in like 20 days and you're like, damn, like, did you even study? Um, it's, it's a lot of pressure because you have a lot of pressure on you. So I would definitely tell you to go ahead and start studying. And that's good. You made it to this fixation part because I would tell you to go ahead and start with fixation. Spend as much time as you can on fixation, period. Fixation is like the beginning. Fixation, I'm always with these analogies. Fix, fixation is like, you know, peanut butter and jelly. It's the bread, right? <laughs> it is the specimen. So st st you're you're right. You're right on target by being here in this fixation um, live. So stay on fixation. Start studying fixation. I need for you to not rush through fixation until you're comfortable. <laughs> I know I'm so retarded until you're comfortable um, until you're comfortable going to, you know, processing. But it's one of those things to where do not rush anything and you have so much time. So just say, for instance, once you get to let's see here, once you feel comfortable knowing which what each fixative does just by just by key points not by all memory but just by key points that's when you'll feel comfortable knowing okay i can go ahead and move to processing and then once it's time for you to almost take your test you can just go back and do fixation as a refresher that's what i always always suggest so go ahead and start on fixation and study for your test 
you'll be rushing for your exam do not register for your exam just yet wait till you've actually gotten through most of your book and then register there really is no rush because and i mean that because if you schedule a test date just say you schedule a test date january the first and it's november the first that may be enough time but just say you schedule your test december the first and it's only november the first that gives you 30 days you can't possibly be ready to take the ASCP in 30 days if you are you are super woman and you only have one thing on your list to do <laughs> so wait till you feel comfortable and you've gotten at least halfway through your book and you like okay it is December I'm already at special stains now I can schedule for my test for January because all I really do is just you know I just need to get through special stains and I should be good so take your time but you know you don't have to take too long but you could take long enough i hear a lot of people say three months yeah that's definitely what i would suggest because you don't want to rush through it three months is actually really good uh do you suggest the bancroft book to study special things honestly i don't even know what the bancroft book looked like let me get back to you on that because well, actually, you know what? Let me see what the Bancroft book is. Because I only have Frida. Um, I'm not really against any book. Because I'm pretty sure. Bancroft. Histology. I'm pretty sure they all will teach you special things. Bancroft histology techniques. Let me see what it looks like. uh to study special things if you just got your regular textbook is that if you just got the regular textbook then that's fine i mean i've never used the bancroft theory and practice of histological techniques i don't see why it would be something bad honestly because if it had, if it has all your special things in there then go for it it's probably going to it's going to teach you the same special things um that it's in your frida carson book so i would definitely tell you to go for it. if that's if that's the book you already have or if you want to get that book um why not it's still going to be and once we get into more lives you'll see you know we're going to go through the same special things gms um let me see uh gms we're going to do pas we're going to do gram stain we're going to do um like all the stains PASD we're going to do um like H and E we're going to do like it's the uh the same stains so if something's missing then you know but other than that we're going to do the same stains that are probably in that book um I have them all you got all the books Jane <laughs> right that's it gets kind of crazy because you you don't want to like have a you it's like you have like all these books in front of you and you're like what the hell right you just it, you get you're just gonna just be sitting there with a thousand books so that's the reason why don't even don't even look at those books just yet and until you know you're ready to get to special things because don't forget once you get to those books then you're gonna have to get to the the questions that go with those stains because you're learning the stains but what we tend to forget is that we can learn the stains all day long but i mean we need to know that it's going to be now we need to now we need to try to um get the questions right for the stains so that's why i'm trying to go hand in hand with if we're on fixation we're only going to focus on fixation and we're only going to focus on fixative questions that's it we're not going to think about processing just yet we're not going to think about special stains just yet nothing um okay let me see elizabeth says i'm done december the 20th congratulations super super excited for you um i finished my clinicals at the end of the week december 20th like for example ginger face has sick acid in it which swells to sell correct oh you know what gender holland if I let me see Elizabeth because you probably know better than me because let me see because I I definitely don't want to just be telling you guys something wrong because I still have to look at stuff 
Oh, the Zinker. Oh, I think Jinder and Holland is the one that goes together. Let me see. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, you know what? Real quick. I know I'm going over. Real quick. Um, if you look in your histology book, remember I was talking about the, the three pigments, the formalin pigment, which is going to be on your on your um, ASCP. It'll tell you removal of for, uh, fixation pigments. So it actually has a section dedicated to um, how you remove the pigments. So definitely look at that. Let me see about the um the gender. Or it's so weird because these words and it's like I think it's called gender. Um, let me see. Zinkers, Orth, Zamboni, Boon, B five. Okay. Boon, gender. Yep. Okay, so the gender has glacial acidic acid and let me see. Because gender solution contains formaldehyde, all regulations govern from my is born. Picric acid should be removed. Let me see about the gender. Holland. Okay, so for Holland. Okay. So if you look at Holland, is Holland has picric acid and um, Holland has acidic acid. So that's that's an example of the shrink and swell to counteract each other. So Holland solution has copper acetate, picric acid, formaldehyde, acidic acid, and um, distilled water. So that's that's an example. Um, acidic acid, for example, gender has acidic acid which swells the cells. Yep. That's glacial acetic acid. Uh, I think that's pretty much the same thing let me look at the definition but i know what holland if you look at gender and holland they're pretty much are the same they go hand in hand um the only difference is that oh yeah i see it gender saturated picric acid and then glacial acidic acid yep so they're going to do the counteracting so that's definitely um a good question was i just confusing i'm sorry let me go to glacial acidic acid the good thing is too if you guys got your book you can look in the back for the definitions so you can um find the definition to certain things so definitely use that but gender holland is definitely an example of that all right jane so yeah, definitely you don't want to miss a thing um you're welcome, Elizabeth. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So, Elizabeth, if you got your clin, if you're done with your clinicals December the twentieth, if that's if that's when you're like you're done with the whole program, then um, I would definitely tell you to before you study for your test, it's going to at least take you a few months, you know, to study. So, I would definitely tell you um, for you know any type of advice would be to wait till you get through at least up into special stains comfortably then schedule for your test if you can wait because you don't want to try to cram everything and try to do things at the last minute you definitely don't want to do that but um yeah i think you, i think you should be good so if you guys don't have anything else we're going to go ahead and end the live but i really appreciate you guys for answering these uh, asking these questions these are really good questions you guys did amazing with the two questions that i gave you once again, look out for the community posts. Um, I will be posting some pop quiz questions throughout the week. And we're definitely going to try to go live next week. Um, so look out for that. I'm not really sure if I'm going live Saturday or Sunday. It differs with me. Okay. I wish I had a, a set schedule, you guys, but I don't. And I apologize about that. But just make sure you have your post notifications turned on so that way you guys know when I do go live. And I appreciate you guys joining me in this live. You guys definitely made this live worthwhile. And I will see you guys in my next live. So do not forget to join the gang and tell a friend, tell your tell your classmates, tell anyone, you know, you know, if they need, you know, any help or they have any questions, let them know about my channel. Let them know about the lab girl. Okay. All right. I had to watch the replay since I was late. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm so, I, I know. I'm so last minute too. So yeah, definitely catch on the replay. Okay.
And then, like I said, share this live with any of your classmates if you guys, you know, know anyone who needs help as well. And I will see you guys in my next live, okay? And I hope you guys have a wonderful Halloween. Bye.